Okay, now, uh, why we talk about God's nature, God's nature preaching method? Because we want to tell people how wonderful the nature of God is. How wonderful God is that He has this wonderful nature. And also tell God people about His grace. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.4 By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. So here is motivating people by promises, many promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So now we as have escaped the corruption in the world, and then we can partake of the divine nature. So we can have uh, part of this divine nature in us. That uh, Now, of course, we cannot have God's nature of omniscience and omnipresence. That omniscience means knowing all things, omni, uh, uh, omnipower, omnipotence means have almighty power. We don't have almighty power, you know. But we have these qualities of God listed here. God's love, His care, His acceptance, His holiness. So we have more love and care for people, except to people. The more we love God and the more we let, the more we have a close relationship with Him, then God's love and care will come to us. And then His holiness will come to us that we don't want to sin at all. We just hate sin. We don't want to sin. Then you hate sin and then you are careful. You don't need to remind yourself and hammer yourself and say, I cannot sin, I cannot sin. But we can say, and when I obey God, God is very happy. So we can be motivated by grace more. I'm happy to obey God. I'm happy to turn away from sin. And then uh, his nature is he has perfect wisdom and power and plan. So when we have a close relationship with God, we also have more of his wisdom, that wonderful teaching. I thank God for this teaching of balance of God's grace and law that uh, many people heard it and they are helped greatly. And also, we have more power of the Holy Spirit and a wonderful plan fulfilled in our life. And God is almighty and omnipresent. Now, this we don't, uh, we, we don't have this nature, but God can tell us things. God can tell us things that He chooses to tell us. And also, God is gentle and meek and kind and patient and forgiving. So He is gentle and we want to learn from Him that we are also gentle with people and kind to people and nice to people and forgiving to people. And then God's grace. 1 Peter 2, 9, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of Him who call you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So we are chosen race, a royal priesthood. We are the priests who bring people to God and bring God to people and a holy nation and God's own people that we can declare the wonderful deeds the wonderful things that God has done so that is grace the wonderful things God has done for us is grace so we can tell people about the wonderful things of God so that is our calling but many people just tell people what to do now that is the law they think it's just the law and some people even interpret and say, well, Jesus gives new law. And that's true. But he thinks that Jesus' main job is to give new law. They think that the main thing about God is law. It's just obedience. Now, of course, obedience in, is in God's plan. But the main thing God is telling us, He's working all these things. He's providing for us. He is changing our life. He is giving us His wonderful nature. He's transforming our life and using us. So we want to tell people how wonderful God is. God is helping me. God is giving me strength. God is giving me joy. God is opening the way for me. We want to tell people about God's grace. We want to de declare His wonderful deeds. So that is, you know, God's nature preaching method. You know, actually it should be called God's nature and grace, but it's too long. So I just shortened it to God's nature preaching method and I and I want, don't want people to confuse it with uh, the gospel of grace or, or hyper grace that people just talk about grace and no law so I don't call it you know uh, uh, 
uh, God's grace preaching method because people may confuse that with out up uh, hyper grace that that uh, that just talk about grace and not and no law. Okay, now we want to tell people about, about the wonderful deeds of God, the grace of God. What this, what has He done? God created us and everything we need. So we just look at our body is so wonderful. We look at uh, the universe, look at the trees and flowers and the birds and the butterflies. It's all wonderful. Thank God and the foods we eat. It's so wonderful. We thank God for all these wonderful things. And God sent Jesus to die for us. That's, that's a great, great news because if without Jesus dying for us, we have no eternal life. So God is blessing us with His Son's salvation for us. And then three, the Holy Spirit moves us and gives us strength. So the Holy Spirit continues to work in our life. We can share with people how the Holy Spirit is working in our life and changing our life. And four, God uh, created uh, God, uh, actually, no apostrophe S. God created a wonderful plan for us. He, he has created a wonderful plan for us. And God provides for us and gives us reward. So He has a wonderful plan. And then we, uh, when we trust in Him, He provides for us and gives us reward. And thank God for all the grace of God. So we want to tell people about the grace of God. That's why our preaching is not just telling people what to do. Now, many people thought that preaching is telling people what to do. The main thing is telling people how good God is. And then that motivates people to change. Okay, so I hope you remember this. The main thing of our ministry is tell people about how good God is, how gracious He is. And then when we obey Him, when we trust in Him, then He'll make all these wonderful things come true in our life. And God's wonderful nature so we need to understand and talk more about His wonderful nature. His love is full of love and His holy. And ho holiness of God is beautiful because heaven is beautiful because it's holy. There's no more sin there. Actually, holiness is also loving God and loving people. So God's holiness is, you know, uh, includes His love. That He loves people perfectly. You know, that's, that's God's love. So God is holy and love and just and He has compassion on us and He cares for people and He has ability to understand all people. He can listen to us and understand our needs. He accepts all people and desires to bless us. And He is able to transform us. He is prosperous. He has all the things He needs. He has all the things we need. And he owning all resources and blessings. All the resources and blessings belong to him. He's almighty, omnipresence, he's present everywhere, all knowing, and foreknowledge. He has foreknowledge of things that will happen in the future. And he is perfect in every area. And he has the ability to control everything. He owns all authority and he has wisdom, he has creativity, he is selfless, he put down himself. Jesus put down Himself to die for us, and God put down Himself to serve us every day. You know, every day we serve by God, but He works in our life. And even when we go to heaven, He continues to bless us with His joy and love. So he's, He continues to bless us all the time, serving us all the time, even in heaven. He's selfless and self-giving, and ability to plan and manage everything. So we thank God. God is so wonderful. That's this. He has this, all this ability. Now, nature is His ability, His quality, His inner quality and nature. Grace is what He does for us. Okay, so I hope you understand this. Nature, okay? God has a wonderful nature, wonderful. Uh, he has this kindness, goodness in Him. So He has this nature uh, no matter what, even without people. Now, He has grace when there are people and then He does wonderful things for us. That's grace. So grace has to have an object, people who receive the grace. So we just don't, we don't love the vacuum, you know, we don't love the space, you know, we love people. So grace has an object, God loves people. God doesn't love the space, you know, uh, God doesn't love nothing, you know, He loves people. So we know that grace has an object, that God loves us, He plans for us, it does all these wonderful things. But God's nature is 
is present before the creation of man. He was there all the time with holiness and love and justice and, and kindness, goodness. That is in him all the time already. And then God's grace for us is what God does to accept us, to love us, to bless us, to help us, strengthen us, and reward us. So all the things that God does to bless us and help us. And God's grace includes His salvation. He saves us. He loves us. He accepts us. Now, love is His nature. He has this nature of love. But it's also His grace. He loves us. So when, when something He does for us, then it's grace. Okay, He loves us. He accepts us. He has a wonderful plan for us. He prepared a wonderful plan for us. Now His ability, His nature is He can create wonderful plans. He can, He's a great planner. And His grace is that He prepared a wonderful plan for us. And He draws us to believe in Jesus through the work of the Holy Spirit. So He, he guides us to believe in Jesus. And, uh, and then the Holy Spirit continues to work in our lives. Uh, to, and uh, He protects us and prepares a wonderful things in all areas of our lives to bless us and provide for us, raise our life to a high level, train our lives, providing opportunities for us to serve Him and bless other people and remembering our good deeds and rewarding us and giving us heaven and so on. So all these things that He works in our life all the time, He's blessing us all the time. He is... He is um, doing wonderful things in our lives all the time. He is guiding us all the time, providing for us, helping us, giving us strength, forgive us, and, uh, and uh, help us to get up again when we were weak. When we are weak, He help us to stand up again. So I hope we all see God's grace, His wonderful grace. Okay, and then when we preach, we should always include these points to motivate people. Uh, first, we have interpretation of the biblical passage. And then the negative and positive examples of people who did not obey God and those who obey God. For instance, if we have a sermon about the, uh, 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 to love people as God loves us, then examples, negative examples is that Christians should love people, but many Christians don't love. They neglect the newcomers. They don't have the love for them. And then, uh, so the people wake up you know, many people think, well, Christians are very, very good. But even when newcomers come to the church, they don't welcome them. You know, how would they go out to do evangelism if they don't welcome the people who come into the nets? You know, like the fish that come in the nets and they don't take the fish. So we don't just go out and, and bring the gospel to people. We want to bring the gospel to the people who step in the church. But that it's true that many people don't love. And God's nature is, and grace he is full of love. And then His grace is He cares about us. He loves us. He changes us so that we can love people. And then He gives us strength to love people. He gives us wisdom to love people. And then when we love people, He's very happy and He'll bless us. So that's His grace. So He supports us all the way. His grace is He supports us all the way to help us to obey Him. And then reminder and warning that he who does not love abides in death. 1 John 3, 14. So if people know that God is love and tell us to love people and they don't care about people, then they are abiding in death if they have zero love. And then how to live out this particular nature of God? How to love? You know, that we first we take care of the lack of love in our heart, the coldness in our heart, the lack of concern for people. So we want to repent of this and take care of that. You know, some people, because from childhood, they have disliked people. So when they, became, when they became a Christian, they have problem loving people. Then they have to take care of that coldness and get healing from God so that He's healed from His past hurts. So He's healed and then He starts to pray for the people and then uh, talk to them, welcome them, and help them, you know, whenever possible and understand the needs. So these are things that we should do all the time uh, to start to do, love the people around us. So, so every point is related to the theme. 
So this theme now here is to love, love people as God loves us. So ex the uh, examples of people who don't love or love people or uh, example of people who love God and love people and then God's nature and grace that He is full of love and He help us to love people and, and He reward us when we love people. He changes us so that we can love people and then reminder and warning that there are people who just don't care about people and then and the Bible says already there's a warning he who does not love abides in death so that this would uh, we we can use this warning to people who don't love other people but if a person is already loving God and loving people helping people all, all the time and rejoicing in God all the time you don't need to apply this warning you don't need, you don't need to say well you don't abide in love then you abide in death you know and because he is He's doing it. He's trusting God to do, do that. So we, the warning part, he, now he should remember that. When he doesn't love people, then he's abiding in death. He should be aware of that. But he doesn't have to, you know, remind himself, if I don't love that, you know, he already is loving people, but he doesn't need to remind himself. If I don't love people, love people enough, uh, if I don't love people more than then God is not happy with me and then I'm abiding in death. He doesn't have to warn himself that. He doesn't have to, you know, be trembling and say, oh, maybe I don't love him enough. For instance, some people, they, the relatives, uh, you know, like their father, mother died and they have been taking care of them. But they say, I have not done enough. So that's not necessary. The guilt is not necessary. But many people feel guilty after the the parents or some relative die and they say I have not taken care of them enough of course we can always do more but when we have really tried hard to do to love them and care about them then we don't have to be guilty so that's applying the punishment and the warning of the law too much would be would be um, bringing people to to fear okay Okay, now, um, now it's already time. I would illustrate this uh, by uh, a message, you know, talking about this message of Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. Okay, I did not put down the whole verse here, but the whole verse goes like this. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, for I am uh, I'm humble and meek and uh, take my yoke and learn from me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light okay uh, and also I missed the part that uh, take my yoke and learn from me and you find rest in your in your soul so so here Jesus talk about come to me and lab you know I interpret this passage first okay come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden so when you have burdens come to Jesus and Jesus can give us rest because Jesus is full of peace. He is full of rest, even though he has a lot of things to do, but he can do all these things while he's in peace. And he has ability to give us peace. So when we come to him, that's the first peace we experience. When we come to him, we experience his peace. And then, um, and then he talked about a second level of peace. He said, you know, I'm humble and meek. Take my yoke and learn from me. And you find rest in your soul. So that's the second level of rest. That when you take my yoke, that means to serve God together. Yoke is what is put on the, uh, the, on the shoulder of a cow to pull the plow, to plow the, 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 um, the field uh, before you sow the seeds. So that's the yoke. So we, we take the yoke with Jesus. That is the G, it's Jesus' yoke. It's not my yoke. It's Jesus' yoke. yoke uh, God is blessing the people. God is doing wonderful things. And then we are serving God with Him. So He called us first to come to Him to find rest. And then take His yoke. And then, very important, to learn from Him. To learn from His nature. Learn from His love. Learn from His compassion. Learn from His joy and freedom because he trusts in the Father. So he has f freedom and joy and relaxation. 
so he could sleep in the storm because he is in peace and then um, so Jesus called us to do that and then he said my burden my yoke is light and uh, and my burdens uh, my my yoke is easy and my burden is light because I memorized the verse in in Chinese okay now how do we use this for the message first negative examples okay we come back here now interpretation of passage I already just interpreted that a negative example of people uh, now I want to say that we don't have to use this uh, outline all the time but we should include at least most importantly the mark the part, part I highlight here the God's nature and grace that we sh should always have this but many people they preach they don't talk about God's nature and grace and then secondly most important is how how but we should also have reminder and warning for people who are lazy who are not obeying God but the main thing we want to have talk about God's nature and grace in this area and how so how is the law also but it's the obedience part not the warning part law has the warning part and also the obedience part they tell us to love God and uh, so tell us to, to obey and then when we disobey then there is the warning that there is the so the warning part of the law okay now about uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30 about come to him to uh, f to have rest and also uh, take his yoke and learn from him and then we'll find rest in our soul so that is uh, his you know inviting us first to take his peace and then follow him and obey him take his yoke so and his grace is he will help us through he will give us strength his make he makes the yoke easy he make the burden light he give us strength so that we can serve God with peace and joy and with relaxation and uh, that we can serve him uh, easily we just trust in him and have a close relationship with him and then we can serve God with power now that's it's odd uh, because many people don't think that way they think ministry is heavy but actually we can serve God with joy and enjoy serving God because his yoke is easy and his burden is light because he takes care of things he'll give us inspiration he'll guide us and then when we obey him he's very very happy so his grace is help us to take the yoke he will give us wisdom give us spiritual gifts and then whenever we take the yoke he will be happy and he bless us and also he will put his nature inside of us so that we can learn to be like him that we can learn to respond to people to care about people to have his compassion so he'll put that nature in us the more we come close to him the more he'll put that nature in us so we need to understand that it's from him it's always grace of God to change us that people if we just tell people to obey that you know that people has weaknesses it's hard for him to obey wholeheartedly but with the grace of God it's God helping us God giving us strength all the time God providing us for us God opening the way for us and then God is pleased with us and bless us when we obey him so that is the grace to motivate people to take his yoke and to learn from him and to find rest in him and the reminder and warning when people don't have the peace of God then they are frustrated they have anger frustration that then it's negative it's you know it's uh, instead of uh, bringing growth it's going to destroy the church there are some pastors who are so frustrated and the people just don't want to be with him so that's the warning and also the warning when people don't take Jesus yoke then he's lazy and he's a, a wicked uh, evil and wicked wick, uh, evil and lazy servant he doesn't use his life at all so there's a warning we want to take Jesus yoke and learn from Jesus some people just serve God without learning from Jesus they have a lot of frustration they don't care about people they get angry easily they have no love for people that is not learning from Jesus we want to serve God and learning from Jesus all the time okay how so how can we have rest in God 
and how can we have uh, take the yoke and learn from Jesus and find the yoke easy the burden light the way first now I always say this the how always has first clear the garbage okay we might have a lot of burdens okay clear the garbage so remember this clear the garbage we might have a lot of burdens or we are using our strength to serve God and we get frustrated we have negative things feelings about ministry and uh, f negative th feelings about God and all these negative things we want to take care of that how to take care of that we see God's work he's helping me God is helping me God is blessing me God is giving me strength so God is helping me so I don't have to be negative I don't have to be unhappy I can be serving God with joy so take a bit of garbage and then clear the garbage and then second always to have strength from God to come close to God and have his peace so come to God and let him take away your burdens let him give you peace and let him teach you teach us how to learn from him how to learn his love and his compassion his forgiveness his acceptance of people so to learn from him and how to have strength to serve God how to have strength to serve God and to minister to people to help people joyfully because we know that God is happy whenever we serve him even when we give people a cup of cold water he's very happy so we can serve God with happy and that way the uh, the yoke is easy and the burden is light so the first point was clear the garbage whatever causes us to be negative to be worried worrisome to be frustrated we take care of those things we trust in God's goodness God has been helping me so I can trust in God's goodness and I can relax in him and then uh, we can learn from him when we have a close relationship with him and he'll change our life so first part is clear the garbage second part is have close relationship with him to have strength and thirdly is how exactly to do, do it how um, how to have peace how to you know when we pray to God relax and don't worry about anything just trust in God's goodness when we serve God don't think of the results just think of God's goodness so I have I live out God's love live out God's peace and joy so I'm serving God with joy and peace and love and then also practically we want to minister to people care about people care about people who are burdensome who are who have a lot of burdens who have you know uh, frustration who are you know who are unhappy we want to bring the peace of God to them and when we do it we want to learn from Jesus how to do it gently and patiently and kindly and then at the same time we can be happy that whenever we serve God we're happy because Jesus said even a little cup of cold water that you give to a little one you by no means lose the reward so whenever we serve God we can serve God joyfully so I say these points again first and how we can talk about clear the garbage any garbage that blocks us from following God uh, following God in that theme and then second how to have strength from him close relationship from him to give us strength uh, and guidance to, to, to obey him in that area so here is how to have peace and how to take the yoke of Jesus to serve God and then thirdly how it practically we do how practically do we do these things how do we take Jesus yoke how do we serve God everyone has a different calling not everyone is a pastor some people they, they they're housewives and they can take care of the family and bring the family to Jesus bring the children to Jesus bring love to the family and the, you know both parents the father and mother both bring love to the family that's serving God in the family that teach the children to obey God and set a good example to them that is obeying God in in our daily life that is serving God also so the how to do it and then fourthly we can encourage people and say whenever you obey God God is very happy with you and so we can be happy so encourage people to be joyful by God's grace because God is happy when we obey him then he can give us rest 
and we can serve God joyfully. Okay, let me say the four points again, four, four parts of the how. First, how to clear some garbage that blocks us from obeying God in that theme. The theme here is to find rest in Jesus and to take his yoke and learn from him. And the second, uh, how to have strength from him, the relationship with him, that we have strength, that we have uh, the wisdom, the ability to handle the problem. And thirdly, how exactly to do it, how exactly to serve God, how exactly to have peace, and how exactly to take the yoke and then help people who are burdensome, who have bur uh, burdens and worries. And then fourthly, how we can serve God joyfully, that because God is happy with us. Okay, God bless you. God be with you. And if you have any questions, you can send to me. Okay, I, I have a prayer now and you can stand up and relax and then you could feel the Holy Spirit. You might feel the Holy Spirit moving your body when you stand up and pray. So relax in Him and pray to Him and follow my prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you, thank you, thank you. You're a wonderful God. You're a peaceful God. You're a God of grace. You're a God of blessings. You have wonderful nature and you are blessing us all the time. Your grace is abundant. You plan for us, for our salvation. You draw us to believe in you. And when, after we believe in you, you change our life. You, you, you put in the, the Holy Spirit into our life and change our nature so that we have more love and more holiness and we want to obey you. We thank you for your wonderful work in our life so that we can take the yoke of Jesus, so that we can find rest in you so that we can be living in peace and joy, so that we can be serving you in peace and joy and with no burden. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you. We need you, Father. We need you, Father. We need you, Lord. Come to us, Lord. Come to us, Lord, and, and work in our lives so that we have peace and joy and motivation to serve you and learn from your kindness and meekness and uh, compassion. Learn from your holiness. Lord Jesus, you are so wonderful. We want to live in your presence and follow your example all the time. Teach us to live in grace, to be motivated by God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now today I have talked very clearly about God's grace and law again. So I hope you understand that. And when you do the assignment, I hope that it's all, that you can uh, do this well and Instead of saying, you have to obey, you have to obey. If not, God doesn't like you. God is going to punish you. Instead of saying that, uh, instead of saying that, we can say, when God loves you, and when you love Him, He's very, very happy. And God has a wonderful plan in your life, and you obey Him, He's very happy. He will help you to enter His plan. So always motivate people with God's grace, okay? God's grace is from the beginning to the end. He draws to Him and changes our life and works in our heart life to give us a new nature and uh, help us to to obey him and serve him and give us wisdom and spiritual gift and give us opportunity to serve God and then raise our level of serving God thank you Lord thank you Lord.